हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल आई होप यू आर डूइंग वेल आई प्रे फॉर यू ऑल गॉड गिव यू अ लॉन्ग लाइफ एंड यू लिव ऑलवेज हैप्पी देयर प्लीज लाइक एंड शेयर दिस वीडियो एंड आल्सो सब्सक्राइब माय यूट्यूब चैनल आई हैव अ रिक्वेस्ट टू यू ऑल वॉच दिस वीडियो टिल एंड फॉर सपोर्टिंग मी सो लेट स्टार्ट टू डे इन्फॉर्मेशन दीज आर सम अपडेट्स ऑन दिन आर बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द वीडियो आई हैव टू टेल यू समथिंग गो टू गूगल डॉट कॉम and search to naropinions.com and open this site here you can see the latest news dinar opinions and dinar guru updates on a single page so visit this site for more information the census is now november 20th and the 21st we will have a curfew during those days article Minister of Transport announces the establishment of the joint maritime authority between Iraq and Britain. Massive amounts of trade is coming to the ports of Iraq. I suspect Al Sudani and his teams are fully aware of the priorities needed to make it all happen. Guys, it's over. It's done and yes, I know something you don't. Have you ever wondered what makes a banking system thrive? What if I told you that Iraq's banking system is described as rentier par excellence? Sounds intriguing, doesn't it? Well, today we're diving into a quote from Mazar Mohammad Saleh, an economic affairs advisor to Iraq's Prime Minister Mohammad Shia Al Sudani. He talks about the need for a comprehensive reform process in Iraq's banking system. This is crucial because it can impact not just Iraq but also the global financial landscape. So, let's break down what this means for Iraq and why it's important for all of us. First, let's understand the term rentier. In simple terms, it means that the banking system relies heavily on income from renting or leasing rather than from successful investments or lending. Mazar Mohammad Saleh points out that this approach is limiting and needs a significant change. But why? A rentier banking system doesn't attract global investors or banks. It lacks the dynamism needed to facilitate growth and innovation. According to Saleh, reforming this system requires creating market institutions. Now, what are market institutions? They are structures and rules that enable smooth operations in a market. Think of them as the backbone of a healthy economic environment. When these institutions are strong, businesses can thrive, and investors feel secure. This brings us to the next point, integration with the international financial system. For Iraq to participate in the global economy, its banking sector must align with international standards. This means adopting regulations that are in line with what global banks expect. Think about it, would you want to invest in a system that doesn't meet basic global norms? Of course not. By reforming the banking system, Iraq can create a more attractive environment for global banks. This could lead to more investment flowing into the country, creating jobs and opportunities. Now let's consider the potential benefits for the average Iraqi citizen. A robust banking system can help people save money securely, access credit more easily, and make investments. Imagine being able to start your own small business with a loan that you can trust. Moreover, a reformed banking system can lead to better services, lower fees, and more options for consumers. This could enhance the quality of life for many people in Iraq. Moving on, let's discuss what a comprehensive reform process might look like. It would likely start with analyzing existing regulations and practices. Next, stakeholders, including government, banks, and citizens, would need to collaborate on new policies education is another critical piece bank employees and citizens need to understand new systems and regulations we cannot overlook the importance of technology in banking reforms investing in digital banking solutions can make services more accessible mobile banking apps could offer services to those in remote areas expanding financial inclusivity now Let's talk about the challenges. Reforming a banking system isn't easy. There may be resistance from those comfortable with the old ways. But that's where leadership comes in, 
strong leaders can champion these necessary changes. Another challenge could be the initial costs of reform. However, in the long run, the benefits far outweigh these initial investments. Thinking about this on a broader scale, a successful reform process can transform not just Iraq's banking system but also its economy. It can generate confidence among international investors, paving the way for more investment. As we go deeper into these reforms, we can see a pathway opening up for trade partnerships and economic collaborations. It's a domino effect of positive changes. Before we move on, think about this, how do you envision a reformed banking system affecting your life? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, I'd love to hear from you. To wrap up, Mazar Mohammed Saleh's insights shed light on the urgent need for reform in Iraq's banking system. A shift from a rentier system to a more integrated and dynamic banking structure could have far-reaching benefits. This is a pivotal moment, not just for Iraq but for all of us observing how emerging economies evolve. If you found today's discussion valuable, don't forget to like and share this video. Your support helps us bring more informative content to light. And if you haven't already, subscribe for updates on similar topics. Let's keep the conversation going, what changes do you think are crucial for a successful banking reform? Leave your comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.